Hey, uh, good morning. Beautiful day, and it's uh, a beautiful day to set and achieve goals, right? Every day is. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a little uh, congestion, but bear with me. I've got a thought that I'd like to pass on, something that I, I heard this morning that I thought was kind of an interesting idea. Never tried it out. Just wanted to pass it along. It has to do with setting goals. As you set your goals, an interesting thing to try is this, and I'm going to try it, and I hope you will do the same. Number one, <clears throat> identify the best possible outcome. Now, this is for your one main goal. This isn't for your monthly or weekly. If you're doing this every day or every week, it's just going to be way, way, way too tedious. You'll, you'll burn out. So do this for your one main goal, the one thing that you're going after, okay? What is the best possible outcome of achieving your goal? Now, that doesn't just mean, okay, so my goal is 50% increase in sales. Best possible outcome, 50% increase in sales. 70% increase in sales, whatever. No, 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 no. I mean, write out what it means to you if you achieve that goal. In other words, a 50% increase in sales does X to my bank account and Y to my lifestyle which allows me to have a better relationship with my family because I'm freeing up time. I don't know, whatever. But what are the side benefits that come from you achieving your goal? More self-confidence. Um, what is it that you're going to get out of it? Not just the goal itself, but all the other good stuff that comes as part of the package. Okay, so the best possible outcome. If everything goes perfect, and you achieve or exceed your goal, and life is absolutely beautiful, what does that look like? Okay? Write that out in just a couple of sentences. This is your one main goal. The second thing, let's go extremes. The worst possible outcome. What could possibly happen that would be <clears throat> devastating? Now, I don't mean the world's going to end tomorrow. That's the worst possible, you know... Um, I mean, what is the worst that's going to happen if you don't achieve your goal? Or if you try and you do, you know, you fail miserably, what does that look like? As it pertains to your goal. World's not ending. Don't put that down. What, uh, what's the worst that can happen? So let's say that your goal is to, um, you know, put yourself out there on, on the stage and uh, do some networking and it's something that pushes you out of your box and makes you uncomfortable because you're an introvert and you go to networking events and you don't like talking to people and you say, I'm going to do this and this, this is my goal for the year, I'm going to do this many networking events and because of my networking efforts, I'm going to generate X number of leads which convert to sales or I don't know what um, and you fail miserably. Maybe you go to the, the worst possible outcome is you go to networking events all year long and you don't talk to a single person. You just go there and you sit in the corner and you nurse your drink and you act busy and, you know, everybody's done it. You, you, we all grab our phones and, you know, if we're not networking, we're not talking to somebody, we don't want to look like we're just standing there. It's awkward, <clears throat> right? Admit it. You've done it. If you've been to a networking event, you've done it. I've done it. But uh, at the end of the, of the goal, you get to the point where you say, I either did it or I didn't do it. And you look back and you say, you know what? Worst possible outcome. I went to networking events because that's easy to do, to go, to physically go. It's harder to actually make something of it when you get there. So your worst possible outcome might be that you did no networking, even though you were supposed to. And as a result, you didn't get any leads, you didn't get any sales, and you completely failed miserably at achieving your goal. That's an example, okay? Best possible outcome, worst possible outcome, all right? Write those two things down, different paragraphs. Third paragraph, ready? Realistically, what is going to happen? What is your prediction? This is what you put on your Nostradamus hat for a minute and say, I predict the following. This will be likely to happen. This will be likely to happen. Knowing me, I'll probably do this. I think I'll push myself a little here. I'll probably 
go to some networking events and not do anything, but then there will be others where I do get some leads, knowing myself, and I'll make an effort to improve. So probably, if my goal is this, I'll probably end up about here, okay? What is your expectation? Based on knowing yourself and knowing your history and knowing where you've been, what your sales have been, what your goals have been in the past, how motivated you've been in the past, the time restraints you have, take all that into consideration and write out what your best guess is at realistically what you think is going to happen. Okay, so you've got those three paragraphs to work around. Just as an interesting point as you get into your goal, tuck those away, save them somewhere, and refer back to them at the end when you, uh, when it's, I guess, the uh, time to sit down, reconciliation day, and you're looking at your goal and you're seeing, you know, the day has come because every goal has to have a date stamped to it. December 31st or July 4th or whatever date. I want to do this by my birthday or maybe there's a major event. Maybe it's uh, weight loss so that you can go to... Uh, high school reunion, so that's the date at the end of your goal. Whatever date is stamped to your goal, and if there's not one, you need to start doing that. Every goal has to have a date. Then um, when that day comes, sit down and pull out your piece of paper. Just as an interesting experiment. And see how you did. Best, worst, and your best guess. A um, Couple of things, why reasons why I recommend this. Just as a, a way to try something. First, I think it gets you thinking the full spectrum. And it, as you're writing, it forces you to paint some images in your mind, okay? Best case scenario. That's always a great thing to have in your mind. What is the best and what am I gonna get out of this? Because it motivates you to say, if I achieve this goal, holy smoke, do you see the impact it's going to have in my life? Not just, you know, $50,000 of sales, therefore $50,000, But what that $50,000 does to your lifestyle, your choices, your freedom, your time, your relationships, all those good things, when we really connect with those, that's the carrot dangling in front of us. We say, you know what, if I kill this, this will be worth it. So whatever kinds of sacrifices we're having to go through, or things, not even sacrifices so much as things that aren't very fun, right? Like writing your goals down every night, every night, every night, writing your goals down takes five minutes, but who likes it? Nobody. It's not fun. I'd much rather be watching TV, sleeping, reading a book, or eating ice cream. But doing those things that aren't as fun, if we truly connect with the result instead of the process, so our brains are connected with how great it's going to be when I achieve this goal, right? The results. Get out of the process mentally. and Put yourself out there that's going to be a huge benefit because during those hard times, you can connect and go, you can remember that paragraph that you wrote and go, gosh, you know, there's a lot of perks with uh, really getting myself, my act together here with this. Number one. Number two, on the worst case scenario, if that did happen, can you live with it? I always like to do this for major choices as well. When you're making a major choice, And you're like, gosh, you know, you're weighing out the good with the bad, the pros and the cons. You make a list, write it all out. What should I do? At the end of the day, can you live with the worst possible outcome? If you say, I got $50,000, I'm going to invest into this, into the stock market. Well, worst possible outcome. You lose it all. That's the absolute worst. All $50,000 gone. Can you live with that? Are you in a financial position to say, yeah, I've got... I've got the flexibility to absorb a $50,000 loss. All right, then throw it into this really high risk stock if you can live with the worst possible outcome. And you're happy with all the other possible benefits. Now that's an extreme example, but I always like to go and understand what is the worst possible scenario so that I can understand if I'm okay with it or not because it gives me confidence, all right? It does. It gives me confidence to know The world's not going to end. I'm okay with that as a worst possible outcome because life will still go on. I will still pick myself back up. I will still set new goals. I'll still push myself. Something else will happen. And I'll still, you know, it's not the end of the world, like I said. So that 
gives confidence. Not that you don't want to use that as a justification. Well, worst case scenario, I can live with that, so therefore I'm not going to do anything and everything's going to be okay. That's the danger though. But don't go there. Let it be a confidence builder. Okay, so say in the back of your mind, this is the worst, pay, worst possible scenario. It's not going to happen because I'm not going to allow it. However, in the strange, you know, off chance that it did happen, I can live with it. It's not going to be a, a devastating to my life, all right? Because a lot of times we get dramatized. I don't make my goal, oh no, it's gonna do this or this, and then, you know, I, I'm getting older now, and things aren't coming together as fast as I'd like, and I'm running out of time, and I'm feeling pressure, and this and that. It's okay, it's gonna be okay. So the worst possible scenario, you, you, know, you spent six months trying something, it didn't work, you're gonna pick yourself up, in another six months, you're gonna do something that will work. All right, so you can live with that. that therefore, it gives you permission to say, it's okay, I'm not gonna stress. I'm going to put pressure on myself to achieve my goal because I like the outcome. Again, positive measures, right? So <clears throat> it does that for you. And then third, it helps you uh, get to know how predictable you can be to yourself. Because if you've got that prediction, you've got, uh, you know, you're kind of gauging about how well you know yourself. And you might surprise yourself. So that's why I say put them down on paper and tuck them away. Put them somewhere you're not going to see them because you kind of want to just put it down and then you want that prediction. To, you don't want that prediction to guide or limit your progress. So you just set it down and kind of put it in the back of your mind. Don't think too much about it. Think about the, the benefits. You want to stay connected with that. But interesting, wouldn't it be, to see how close you predicted your own success. And when you really get good at knowing yourself, and you get accurate at predicting your own success because you know yourself better than anybody. Pretty cool, pretty valuable skill when it comes when you know when it comes time to predicting other things. Well, I know I'm pretty pretty much like this. And I know that it's gonna have to push myself, but I know that I'll push myself, but I also know that I'll back down every so often because of this and this, and I'll be at about 80%, but that's me, and if my hundred percent is phenomenal. 80% is still darn good. I'm okay with that. At least I'm not gonna be a total failure and the world won't end. It gives you a good barometer. It, it really connects you, I think, on multiple levels to what you're trying to accomplish and how you're going about it. And I just think it's an interesting idea, so I thought I'd pass that along. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you tried it? Have you done anything like this? Have you heard of doing it? And if so, has it worked? Is it a stupid idea? Is it, um, am I crazy? I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Jot them down. Follow me on Facebook. Um, subscribe if you haven't yet on this YouTube channel. I'd love to hear more from you. And if you haven't yet, last thing, go to 3x5goals.com. And you can see an outline of how I do my goal setting system. I've got it in my back pocket, so I'm not going to pull it out. But I carry around with me my 3x5 cards everywhere I go. And I have my goals, my my big main goal, monthly, weekly, and then daily to-do list on the back. It's a fabulous system. It forces simplicity. It also integrates mind space where I can uh, write down ideas and a little mini gratitude section for things I'm thankful for that day. If you're intrigued, interested, go to 3x5 Goals. Sign up. Um, nothing. I'm, I'm not selling anything right now. In fact, I value your input. If you don't, uh, I'm considering launching it as a product but you don't have to. Go to the store and buy some cheap 3x5 cards and just do it. It's not, that's what I did for years. So I have mine printed up now. I designed them and it just helps me stay on track. But it's a great program. It's a great system and I have tons of thoughts and ideas for setting goals. I'm very passionate about setting goals and very passionate about helping you set your goals. And hopefully these three little suggestions are something that you can find helpful in your goal setting process. Have an amazing day.